Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech and in this video we're going to be talking about PC screen recording. Now I've done my fair share of videos on different screen recorders in which I showed you guys how to use particular programs and how to set them up to meet your requirements and needs. But this video is going to be a bit different. This is not going to be a tutorial, review or anything similar. Instead of getting into technical aspects of any specific programs by showing you how to use them. In this video, I wanted to talk about some of the fundamental things about screen recording in general. Things that you should know if you're just getting into it or if you've been recording for a while now, but it's kind of turning out to be a frustrating process for you. Which it shouldn't be, by no means. Doing something you love and enjoy and sharing it with other people should be a fun thing. And I'm sure that for the great majority of people, it certainly is. But when you're having trouble because the tool that's supposed to help you share those things with the world doesn't work the way you expect it to work, it can be a frustrating thing. And when it comes to screen recording, at some point probably everybody who has ever recorded a game, tutorial, educational video or whatnot has experienced that frustration. So without further ado, here are some of the most important things you should know about screen recording that will hopefully help you bring any possible frustrations to the lowest possible level and focus on what's important, which is having fun with what you're doing and sharing it with the world. So in my opinion, the first thing you should have in mind and prepare yourself for is the fact that not every screen recording software will work for you. This is the most important thing that I want to emphasize in this video, so that's the reason why I'm probably going to spend the most time talking about this particular point. Now you might ask, how do you mean it won't work for me? Will it not work in a technical way, like it won't run properly on my system, or it won't work for me in the sense that it just won't suit my needs? And to answer that potential question, I have to say both. First let's look at this from a technical perspective. Here's a hypothetical situation. In fact, it's not even hypothetical. I see this very often in the comments. Some young person, for example, wants to start recording tech tutorials on their computer. So they go on YouTube, they type screen recording in the search box and download the program from the first video they watched. So they set it up, something doesn't work and what do they do? They go back on YouTube and say the program's a scam or it sucks when it's clearly well known and works fine for so many people or they simply comment something in the lines of, it won't record, what do I do? Here's the thing, when it comes to software, at first sometimes things just won't work the way they should, but there's always a reason for that and it usually turns out to be a problem that you can solve very easily in the vast majority of cases. To put it as simple as possible, there is a lot of stuff on your operating system and sometimes some things interfere with other things. Sometimes some things won't work if you previously haven't installed other things. But to solve a problem, you need to know how to troubleshoot. Going online and saying, it doesn't work, tell me what to do, won't help you do anything. Nobody who doesn't have access to your computer can't tell you what the problem is if you don't give enough detail. And when it comes to popular screen recording programs, any issues you may experience are usually very common and it's very likely that you can find a solution if you simply go on a support page, a forum, or watch a tutorial and carefully listen to what those sources of information have to say. For example, there was this annoying OBS issue that a lot of people were experiencing after they upgraded their system to Windows 10. Basically, they couldn't record normally because all they would see after pressing record was a black screen. Now, it didn't take long for people to figure out a fix for the problem, but as it would turn out, the fix didn't work for all of the users who were having the black screen issue. So somebody else eventually figured out another fix that helped those people as well. So why am I saying this? Because when using popular software that has been out there for years and years, it is very unlikely that the issue you're experiencing hasn't been experienced by anybody else and that no one ever came up with a solution for it. The information is out there, but you have to know how to troubleshoot in order to more efficiently find the right fix for the specific problem you're having. However, sometimes a screen recording program will do everything it's supposed to do, but you still won't be very happy with it. Sometimes it just won't meet your requirements for a decent video. Why? Well, because not all screen recording programs have the same capabilities and not all of them are great for all types of computer activities. For example, Microsoft Expressions Encoder Screen Recorder is great for recording stuff you do in desktop applications. I've personally recorded several very successful videos using it, but it really isn't very good for recording gameplay. 
Windows 10 Game DVR, on the other hand, is decent for recording gameplay, but practically impossible to use for creating in-depth tutorials in various desktop applications. It's very possible that you won't be satisfied with the first screen recording program you download and set up. Finding the right one for the right activity may require you to actually test a few out first. And that brings me to my next point. It's very likely that you'll end up using different screen recorders for different activities. I already mentioned how the Microsoft Expressions Encoder screen recorder and Windows 10 Game DVR are decent for one thing, but not for another. And there are other examples of that. A lot of people still use Fraps to record gameplay, but unless they have a Windows Aero user interface, they can't use it to record their desktop. Another example would be the MSI Afterburner screen recording option that I personally use to record a lot of gameplay, but I didn't use it to record tutorials and desktop applications because MSI Afterburner primarily isn't meant for desktop recordings. You can get it to record the desktop, but it doesn't always have to work, so why would I bother with it when there are other great and free programs that do just that without requiring me to do any additional work? So you'll probably find yourself using different software for different things. You might use one for desktop related things, one for games, and then again a totally different one for something like online streaming. Or you can simply just use OBS which is free and does all of that. And I say could because OBS is great, but it is known to have its own issues and just because you technically could use it for everything doesn't mean that you ultimately will. Maybe you'll use it for one type of activities and use something else that you find more convenient for other stuff. So if you find one program that's good for recording one thing and is not so good for another, you really don't have to deal with it. You can simply use another program. But one thing that you will need to deal with when it comes to screen recording are large file sizes, especially when it comes to recording gameplay. The higher you go with the quality settings, the higher the file size of the video is going to go. And even though this is considered to be common knowledge when it comes to screen recording, every now and then somebody who is new to it will ask, why are my videos so huge and how do I fix this? Well, one way to somewhat reduce video file sizes would be to lower the quality settings. Unfortunately, that will affect the way the video looks as well, as it is impossible to decrease the physical size of the video without decreasing the footage quality itself. So if you're new to screen recording, keep in mind that you'll need to have some sort of video editing program that you'll first off probably use to edit your video and then render it to an acceptable file size that will keep as much of the original quality possible. If you use programs like Adobe Premiere Pro or Sony Vegas, good for you, but if you can't afford that type of video editing software, a program like Windows Movie Maker can do just fine for basic editing and rendering to very high quality videos. Now today everybody wants to have the best quality, but like we already said, the higher you go with the settings, the bigger the video file size will be. And that might not be the only issue high settings will cause, which brings us to the next thing I wanted to talk about performance issues. Screen recording is one of those computer activities that represent a heavy burden on your system resources. And if you're performing another system heavy activity while screen recording, for example like playing a video game, you're most likely to experience noticeable performance issues, especially if you're working on a low-end or mid-range computer. Now, depending on the power of your system, these issues may range from minor stutters or frame drops to situations in which whatever activity you're engaging in becomes practically undoable. But this is something that will not only vary depending on the power of your system, but on the actual quality settings you decide to go with within the screen recorder's options as well. Of course, the higher you go with the quality settings, the heavier the load on your system. Performance issues may also vary depending on particular recording software that you're using. For example, Fraps is notoriously known for causing severe frame drops, especially on lower end machines. Now, to reduce performance issues, the first thing you would normally do would be lower your video recording settings, but in the case of this particular program, you only had two options, either full size or half size, and while going with half size would give you relatively smaller file sizes and should cause less frame drops and stutters, that's pretty much all you can do and if you still continue to have performance issues after that, you're pretty much screwed. Fortunately, there are other screen recording programs that offer you a variety of settings that you can try out in order to find that sweet spot that will balance video quality on one side and system performance on the other. Which brings me to the final point of this video. 
experiment with the recording software you're using and find the quality settings that work best for you. Of course, we all want our videos to look the best they can, but going higher and higher in the settings department won't always give you optimal results. In fact, very often it will do the exact opposite and turn out to be completely pointless. For example, if you're playing a game that can only run up to 720p on your system, what's the point in setting up your screen recorder to capture video in 1080p? There is no point because in a scenario like that, going with anything higher than 720p in the screen recording settings would be totally unnecessary and counterproductive. Another example of pointless high settings would be setting up your recorder to capture, let's say, 60 frames per second when the game you're playing can only run up to 30 frames per second on your particular system. It's completely and utterly pointless. Now, when people just get into screen recording, very often we go online to places like YouTube where we can find instructions and we search for information on how to make high quality videos using a particular screen recording program. I've done this myself plenty of times in the past. It's just much easier to do what someone else did to get good results rather than experimenting for myself and wasting time I could be spending actually recording gameplay or tutorials on my desktop. But the thing you have to have in mind is that the settings that work great for someone else don't have to be optimal for you. So don't go with the highest settings. In many cases, they will be completely pointless for you. Find the optimal settings that work best for the particular activity you're engaging in on your particular system. But above all, remember to have fun and enjoy what you're doing because in the end, that's what this is all about, doing something you love and sharing it with the world. So those would be just a few general things that I find most important about screen recording. Of course, we could talk about a lot of other things in particular, especially if we start getting into specific programs, but this video can only be so long. So please feel free to add to the table by posting your own tips in the comments below. I really do hope you found the video useful. If you did, please leave a like and share it with your friends. For more videos in the future, just hit that subscribe button and I'll definitely see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and as always, stay strong.